Okay, so we are going to continue what we were working on last week. And we were talking, Elijah, about a special type of word. And we were talking about verb. What kind of words were we talking about? Verbs. Verbs. And remember, verbs are action words. action words. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the same sentences that we looked at last week on Tuesday. We're going to look at them again today. And we're going to see if we can read them together and find the verbs. Okay? Let's read the first sentence together. He walks to school. Tell me the verb. Walks. Walks. Is that, is that something that you can do? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's read the next one. The whale swims fast. What is the action word? Swims. Swims, right? So we have that symbol underneath to show us that is the verb or action word. All right, I want you to show me these action words. Smile, write, stand, sit, laugh, <laughs> and show me slant. All right, I want you to show this symbol when you hear the action word in it, okay? The wind shakes. What was the action word? Shakes. 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 Kind of action words? Kick, 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 kick. Ooh, so what was different about that sentence, raising a tall hand? What was different? Analia? The thing that was different about both of it, about 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 it, and it told about two action words. So can a sentence have more than one action word? Yes. 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 Can a sentence have no action word? No. no. It has an action word. Yes. Mm, I hear some different things. Yes. I hear some yes and some no. Raising a hand. Can it be a sentence without an action word? Raising a tall hand. Answer. Tell me why or why not. Adelise? No, because because if we didn't know what the characters doing we we wouldn't know what we wouldn't so know now, what the action they're doing a sentence needs an action word you need to know what the the person place thing or the character is doing to have it be a complete sentence a complete sentence needs to have an action word so last week we we learned a new action word song and dance a different one from last year so I'm going to see if we can do that to review those action words before we move on with our writing. We're birds. We're the action words. We're the main attraction words. We're all birds are action words. Everybody needs us. We're birds. So in that song, we heard lots of action words, like if there wasn't any hit or run or jump, like there's lots of things that we couldn't do. Okay, so something else that we're looking at this week, Hassan, is we're looking at sentences that have more than one action word, like we looked at here, Sanaya. So when we look at this sentence, I want you to follow along and read uh, carefully and see if you notice something in this sentence a little bit different. I run, catch, and pitch at the game. So did you hear some action words? Give me an action word that you heard. Eva A. Run. Riley. Catch. Remy. Pitch. Hmm, how many action words were there? Three. Three. Now, what did we need to do if we had three action words? What did you notice? Remember, we talked about this. Tuesday. What did we need to put in between, Remy? We needed to put and. We needed to put that word and. Did we? How many times did we hear the word and? One. Only one time. And sometimes what I see friends do is say something like this: I run and catch and pitch. That sounds kind of boring when we say and so many times. So instead of using and the first 
times. What do we use instead? A comma. A comma. A comma. So here we could say, I can blank, blank, and blank. Who could fill in that sentence with three things they can do? So three action words, you would need to have a comma in between, right? And then an and, hands down. We're going to do one Go. sentence before we move on with talking more about our writing. We're going to do one sentence where you're going to make sure you include an action word. I want you to think about an action that you do in school. So your sentence might say, I read in small group. What is my action word? I read. Read. Can you put your two thumbs up when you have your sentence about what you do in school that includes an action word? And turn to your shoulder buddy, please. I Jodens, what was the action that Serenity did in school? Maybe she runs at recess. Can you? I catch at recess. Catch at recess. Okay. So we are going to reread a part of the story, Nate the Snake is Late. Remember we read that last week? And we're going to pay attention to something that we started talking about on Tuesday. We started talking about sensory details. Remember our five senses? Yeah. So um, can you, when I point to one of my body parts, can you tell me the sense that that makes you think of? See. Sight. So sight, sight. how something Love. looks. Feel. Feel. How something Feel. feels. Touch, right? How something tastes. Taste. Hear. How it sounds, right? Smell. And how it smells. So writers use words that describe those five senses, Hassan. And those are called sensory details. So we're going to reread a page of Nate the Snake is Late and see if you can find the sensory detail. That, so let's see if you can hear about how something looks, feels, tastes, sounds, and smells and find the sensory detail that the author included in the story. Eyes are up so you can read um, and follow along. The sun is hot. And I can't hold it off. Then, hand if you heard a sensory detail. <coughs> Eva D? The sun is hot. Mm, what does the sun is hot tell about? What kind of sense does that tell more about? Remy? How it feels. About how something feels, right? The author uses that sensory detail to make it a little bit more interesting. We could picture like, Ooh, the sun is hot, and I know snakes like it to be hot, so that would be really easy for him to just curl up and take a nap, nap right? And then it, then it made me think, like, oh, no, maybe he might be late because he takes a nap. So that was really an important detail to the story. So this week, remember, we're going to be writing a poem. And a poem is a little bit different than a story, right? A poem tells thoughts and feelings in kind of an interesting way. Sometimes poems have what kind of words? Rhyming words. Rhyming words. Sometimes poems have rhyming words and they might not have complete sentences the way all stories do. So we're going to talk more about the word web that we created about running late. Remember we said we're going to write a poem about a character that's running late for something? Yeah. And we thought about some times that we might be late and some reasons why we might be late. Can anyone maybe add to or think of some other ideas that make that are some reasons that might make you late? You're waiting for your sister to, to finish brushing her teeth. Mm, so you might have to wait for somebody else. Yeah, that might make you late. You have to wait for someone. Adelise? Um, you might have too much fun and and you with somebody or with yourself, so you got too distracted, so you that's how you got late. Yeah, you might have been too distracted. Like sometimes that happens in the classroom, like we're so busy learning something and we're having so much fun doing an activity and then we realize, oh, oops, 
we're running late for music. We have to line up so quickly. So I'm gonna review some of these other ideas that we had brainstormed the other day to help us think about some ideas for our poem. So let's put our eyes up on our word web here, Jalen, so we can think of some of the other things that we came up with that might make you run late. We said you could have car trouble or traffic or there could be an accident. So there was a lot of th different things that we said could possibly make somebody late. And we're gonna be writing a poem about a character who is late. And because it's a poem, it might be a little bit silly. It might have some rhyming words and it's gonna sound a little bit interesting. Can you check your body, please? And we had already said, well, we came up with a silly kind of character that we were gonna write this poem about. Somebody said, hmm, we're gonna have a poem about a talking watermelon. So first we wanted to figure out the character. Then we wanted to figure out why this character was late. And we said, well, it, it, this watermelon's name was Water. And he's late for a birthday party. And when he came in to the birthday party, everyone was already singing. So we started our poem. Now we need to think about what made Water the watermelon late. So let's read what we have so far to start off our poem. I'll read you follow along and listen. Water the watermelon had a party today, but last night he watched too much TV and slept the morning away. Ooh, did we have some rhyming words? <coughs> yeah. Today. Yes, yes today. we had today away. Oh, so maybe today we can see if we can continue to make some rhyming words. Well, what do you think happened to water the watermelon <coughs> next? Eva? That he might look at the clock. Is there a time that rhymes with eight? Eight. Uh, eight. When water woke up, it was already eight. Since the party started at seven, he was very late. I can't think of a quick rhyme right here. So we could write it first, and then maybe tomorrow we could go back and see if we could change some of our words to make them rhyming. Does that sound like a good idea? We'll get our words out first, and then... Yeah, and then see if we could add some um, some rhyming words. We maybe will end saying something about how much fun they had. So let's see if we can read through the poem. I want you just to follow along and listen as we read through. Um, let's see, Remy, could you read the poem, Nice Strong Voice, for us, please? Water is late. Oof. Different word the week. Sound like a poem? Sound like a good poem? Makes sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you hear how the the parts that had rhyming words sounded like a little bit more interesting? Yeah. Yeah, they sound like a little bit more fun. Those ones kind of sounded a bit more like a poem that had kind of some rhythm and rhyme. So tomorrow, we're going to see if we can add some more sensory details to this poem and see if we can make some more rhyming words. Because good writers always come back to their work and see if they can add and change it a little bit. Um, so remember, we've been talking about a special type of word. We've been talking about those action, action words. And what is the fancy name for action words? Verb. 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 So some verbs are drop, jump, mix, right? Those words all show an action that you can do. It shows something you can do. Can we read um, this sentence together, please? The apes on a branch. We will check this word. Apes on a branch. Hmm. Thumbs up if you know the action word. When you hear the snap, I want to hear the action word. Hey. Hey. How do we know that word is an action word or verb? How do we know, Remy? Because, because hangs is something that you do. It's something that you do. All right, let's read the next one. Lake and and walk to school. Action word. Walk. Can you show me walk? Take a seat. And 
why are these verb or action words important in these sentences? How come they need to be in these sentences? Analia? Because then you wouldn't know what they were doing. Yeah, let's, can we try the sentence without the verb? No. We, let's no. try reading it without the verb and let's see. Now they get into school. That doesn't make any sense. We don't know what they did to school, right? We need to know what they did or what they did. So we need a verb. All right, I'm going to say some verbs and you're going to show me that verb silently unless the verb has noise, okay? Jump. Hop. All right. So I want you to think of a verb, something that you do during music class. Can someone give me an example before we work with a partner? You're going to share a sentence about something that you do in music class of, that has a verb. Riley, could you share a sentence with a verb about what you do in music class, please? We, we play the drum in music class. Ooh, and if I was Riley's partner, I would tell her the verb that I heard. So, whole sentence. Raising a hand, what are you going to do after your partner says their sentence? Eva D? Then you're going to say, then you're going to say the, um, that, the word that's a verb. Tell them the, the word that was a verb in their sentence. Red, orange, and purple, turn around to share with your shoulder buddy, Sophia, and I mean to share with your partner, Sophia and Zamir. You go first. So in music class, we do the shoulder Okay. Yes. So we do the shake dance. Zamaya, what was Will Casey's action word? Will Casey's action word was dance. Okay. So remember yesterday, we also started talking about um, commas in sentences. So if we have more than one verb, Zamaya, in a sentence, then we need to separate it with the comma. What does a comma tell us to do with our voice when we Pause. see one? Raising a tall hand, what does a comma tell us to do? Camilla? Pause. Pause. <coughs> Stop quickly, right? It lets us know that we have to take like a little breath and pause. Otherwise, the sentence doesn't really make sense. So let's see if we can read the sentence and maybe there might be some mistakes that we need to fix. Let's see. What are the action words we heard? So how many verbs in that sentence? Three. Three verbs in that sentence. Anything missing? Adelise? A comma between swim and quack. And Leah agrees. All right, let's try again. Now see if we can read it much smoother with nice expression. A dog can swim, quack, and sit. That sound better? Yes. All right. Okay, so we're going to go back a little bit to our poem from yesterday and talk a little bit more about those sensory detail words. So remember, sensory details is what we were looking for in our story. And remember, sensory details describe how something looks, looks or feels, feels or hears, sounds, sounds or smells, smells or, or tastes. tastes. Right? They're called sensory details. Can you say those words? Sensory details? Sensory details. And authors like to have sensory details to make their writing more interesting, to make readers feel like they were there. So we said we were going to write a poem, and we started to write a fantasy poem, right? About a character, Hassan, who was late for an event. And we came up with some different reasons why that character might be late. So the first thing I want us to do is reread our poem and then we're going to see if we can find some sensory details in our poem and see if maybe some friends can help us to add some sensory details, like add some information or change some information. Let's see, um, Remy, could you um, read the poem for us, please? Water the watermelon had a party today, so water was a bit sad, he misses out on some fun. 
Mm. So do you hear how our beginning part sounded more like a poem? Yeah. It kind yeah. of had some rhythm and rhyme. We had those rhyming words today, away, and eight, and late. And I kind of heard when Remy was reading it, we heard some rhythm. Do you hear any sensory details that tells how something looks or sounds or feels? Do you hear any sensory details? He hears the people singing. He hears the people singing. So we heard some information about singing. I water the watermelon when he heard them singing, he felt sad. Mm, so we know how his feelings were. Do you think we could like add a little bit more to describe how we knew he was sad? He yeah. was sad because because he was late and and that uh, he was pause for a second how we know he was sad, not why he was sad, how we know. We've talked a lot about like feelings and how we can tell someone's feeling a certain way. How would we know that water was feeling sad? Analia? If we add? saw water being sad, we would see him like leaning down and his mouth being frowning. Mm -hmm. His mouth is looking a little frowny. His body is leaning down. So do you think we could add those those details to describe what water looks like? Yeah, yeah so, hmm. So water, instead of saying is a bit sad, we could say like, so water, water's body is what? What did you say? Do you think you could add those words like so water's body is maybe what's a word for like leaning down can you think of a word droopy, Slouchy. droopy. i was thinking the same word droopy sounds like an interesting word so water's body is droopy his body is droopy and i'm going to add the word because right here because we missed out on some fun so it didn't say he's sad but we could tell he's sad because we know what his body looks like um, Eva D, did you have an idea of like what might have woken him up? Yeah, like a time, like a timer. A timer maybe went uh, off? An alarm. Serenity? Alarm. Maybe an alarm went off? So it's like a clock. Well, let's see. Let's look because remember he woke up late. So I'm thinking maybe he missed his alarm. Do you think there's like another noise that might wake him up? We're on the right track thinking about a sound. What's another noise that might have woken him up? Elijah? Maybe a woodpecker was knocking on a tree. Ooh, so a woodpecker. Ooh. So water woke up to a woodpecker's knock. That sounds really interesting. Could you add that up here, Elijah? But let's see if we can now reread those parts. I just want you to follow along and listen to the parts with those careful sensory details. Can you put your eyes up to make sure you're tracking with eyes and ears? When water woke up to a woodpecker's knock, it was already eight. Since the party started at seven, he was very late. Ooh, could, did you hear that woodpecker's knock in your mind? Yeah. Yeah, that would be very loud. Sometimes that wakes me up. So water's body is a bit droopy because he missed out on some fun. Could you picture his droopy, sad body? Yeah, that sounded more interesting than just saying he was sad. So tomorrow, Tomorrow is going to be when it's going to start to be your turn to start your poems. And what are you going to make sure you're including in your poems? What we just worked on today, what are you going to make sure you include in your poems? Raising tall hand. Well, we're going to work on putting some sensory details in our poem. All right. Let's read that blue word at the top of page 27 together. Verbs. Verbs. All right. Um, Sanaya, can you read to us what a verb's job is? Listening, tracking, please. The words race, zoom, and dash are verbs or action words. You can use commas to separate three verbs. So how do we know that those three words are verbs? Because they're <coughs> action words. They're action words. There's something that you do. do, do, right? You could do all three of those actions. So let's look at that sentence from the student's example. Can you slide down? And let's read that sentence together. I, I and mm, So what were the actions that that girl or boy did? 
When they included Hassan more than one action word, what did they need to make sure they did? Camilla? They a, a comma. They had to put a comma after each word. After each, what kind of word? Action. Action word, right? All right, really quickly, I want you to think of three action words that you can do. Put your thumbs up right on top of your book when you have those three action words that you can do. And I want you to use like a level three, Eva A, a level three like whisper voice to share that sentence with your partner. You to listen and share. Go ahead. So remember, we've been talking about special sensory words this week. And raising a tall hand, if you remember what sensory words do. Okay. Adelise? Sensory words is like something that we put in books so we can the people can feel like they're with the character. Because see, smell, taste, and they tell about what you see or feel or hear with your senses, right? So let's see if this student included some sensory words. Let's slide down to that blue, those blue words, and let's read those blue words together. Riley, could you read those words after the blue words and we'll follow along? Mm. Is she doing the same thing as, that we are this week? Yeah. yeah. yeah she's writing a poem about being late. late, and she included sensory details. Let's slide down to her poem. Let's see if we can read it together with some rhythm. When I am late, I race, zoom, and dash. I love and I love as black as a this time I want you to read with a zero voice while I read. I want you to hear the rhythm and rhyme so you can tell it's a poem. Reading with a zero voice, tracking. When I am late, I race, zoom, and dash. I huff and I huff as quick as a flash. So is she really like a flash? No. No, she's just saying that she's very, she's very fast. She's very quick, right? Was that like a sensory word? Did that tell what it looked like, smelt like, felt like? What did she tell? What it looked like. Looked like. Could you picture her moving really fast? Yeah. Yeah, I could picture Kate moving really quickly. Um, what words, what action words also told about how she was moving quickly? Analia? Flash and zoom. What else? What other action words told about her moving quickly? Jodens? Word, right? Race. Yeah, there was lots of words to describe she was moving quickly. Can you close that up? Pass it forward. I want to read one example of a poem. Now, this isn't a poem about being late. This is actually a poem about a creature that's early. And this is a poem by um, one of my favorite poets, <coughs> Shel Silverstein. And it's come from this story where the sidewalk ends. So I want you to listen and see if you can tell who the character is and maybe think about why they're being early, okay? It's called Early Bird. Oh, if you're a bird, be an early bird and catch the worm or your breakfast plate. If you're a bird, be an early bird, but if you're a worm, sleep late. So what character should, should be early in that poem? A bird. A bird. Which character did he suggest should be late? A worm. Why, why do you think they said the worm should be late? Riley? Because birds, because birds like worms, and if birds spot the worm, he might eat mm, So he's saying, maybe the worm should sleep in so the bird misses him, right? Did you hear some rhyming words in that? Maybe the bird. Mm -hmm. I heard late and plate. Did you hear how it kind of had a rhythm? Yeah, so it was a really short poem, but it was still, it was, it made us laugh and it, it told a little bit of a story. So you're going to make a poem today. 
Yes. And you're going to make a poem about being late. And we're going to start first by writing one about ourselves. So you're going to think about if you were late for something. So I need you to think about maybe why you're late. And think about maybe what you might look like if you're late or what you might like sound like or act like if you're late, thinking about those sensory details. And we have some ideas up here from the other day that we thought lots of different reasons why somebody might be late. So you could use one of those ideas or a new idea if you'd like. And I want you to put your two thumbs up if you have an idea about, hmm, like where might I be going? And why might I be late? What might I look like, sound like, or act like if I'm late? So you're going to turn and talk with your shoulder buddy, but there needs to be one speaker at a time. And what is the other person's job when you're the speaker, Camilla? Listen. The listener, right? So after they speak, could you give them like an idea? Could you give them a comment or a question? Yeah. Well, could you maybe, maybe say like, ooh, that sounds like good, or ooh, you could even add on this, right? So you might give them a suggestion or ask a question about their what they're thinking about to help them with their writing, or tell them like, ooh, that sounded like a funny idea. Okay, so I want you to practice adding either a comment or a question, and then you're going to share. Can you please turn and talk to your same shoulder buddy? So I heard some different ideas, Elijah, as to why friends are late and some different places that they are going. So I'm glad we had some different ideas. All right. So we are going to start to do our own drafting. We're going to do a poem that's kind of like Kate's poem that she had that in our in our example book. So. This poem's gonna be titled, When I Am Late. So it says, when I am late, I blank, blank, and blank. So I have some action words in there. I blank and blank as blank as a blank. So remember, she said as quick as a flash, but you could use something else too. So you have to think about where you're going and why you're late. So we're going to write this one first, okay? And then there's going to be another step on the back. Some of us might just do this part, and that's okay. And some of us might have time to start a second poem that is going to be a little bit different. So remember, do poems have to rhyme? No. No, they don't have to rhyme. Sometimes they sound like fun or silly if they rhyme, but they don't have to have it. But they might have like a rhythm to it. Or maybe there's some silly words or words that describe the sound of things. And I want just why I want to see if you can include those sensory details in your poem. So the readers feel like they're there. They can see and hear and feel and taste what you're doing. So when you get to your seat, you're gonna write name and date at the top. Parking your pencil. Should you write it in the big space or the lines? The lines. The lines. All right, I want you to put your special poet cap on right now, ready to fill in those parts of the poem. Thinking about what you look and sound like when you are late. And if you finish that step, you can put two thumbs up so a teacher can come read over before you go on to the back. Right now is your independent writing time. You just had your time to share. Now you're working on your own. So our draft is started and we're gonna come back to this tomorrow. We'll see if we can, if there's anything we need to maybe edit or change like Maybe we might want to add more sensory details, but we're going to pause where we are now and come back to this tomorrow. Okay, so um, what kinds of words have we been telling about, talking about this week action. in our writing? Action, action words. words. What's the fancy word for those action words? Words. Verbs, right? Um, what are some actions that you can do? Raising a tall hand, if you can give some an action word, just give the verb or action word. Hop. 
Ooh, handsome. I bet we could have come up with hundreds more action words. Yes, those were all action words. And remember that every sentence needs to have an action word, right? Every sentence needs to have a verb that tells what the person, place, thing, or animal does in the sentence. So let's see if we can find or identify the verbs in these sentences. Can you help my mom wait? What's the action word that like the, the person, in, person, place, thing, or animal in the sentence is doing? Help. Help. The question is can you help? help. That's the main action word. Anything else in the sentence that anyone was noticing? Instead of John add spells, add spells, is that one word? No, no, no. no we need to take a break. We need to say John add spells, spells and, and sketches at school. That makes more sense now, right? Do you think that we could change this verb sees to a different yeah. verb? Yeah. 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 Let's change it. Let's maybe make like an even more interesting one instead of sees pancakes on a plate. Chan grabs her pancakes on a plate. Ooh, Chan grabs pancakes on a plate. I'm gonna say some words, and if it's a verb, I want you to say verb. Okay. If not, okay. Run. Verb. Grab. Verb. Lunch. Is in a uh, verb. Lunch is a thing. Now, now, now. Thing. Nice job. So I want to see if you can challenge yourself to ha to come up with some sentences with your partner that include these action words. If Serenity and I are partners, I'm gonna say, I made sure to grab my fruit at lunch, and then she's gonna give a sentence with a different action word. Can you try one of the different ones from up there. So we went back and forth with different verb, different sentences that included only these verbs. So I want to see if you can challenge yourself to do that. Turn to your shoulder buddy, please. Raising a hand if you think you have a a good sentence to pass on. Can bake a chocolate chip cookie. Okay, so something that good writers do is always go back and revise their writing, right? Do you think, like Dr. Seuss, when he wrote a story, did he just write it in one day and then he was all done with it? No. no. He went back and made it better, right? So we know, Jodens, that good writers go back and make their writing even better. So we're going to look at this poem that a student wrote, and we're going to see if we can go back and revise it or make it better. Okay? I have to go. I must rush. We will get there today, Mom. Mm, so that was a rhyming poem about being what? Late. About being late. But I think this poem, it could have had more sensory details some detail at the beginning that we could tell more sensory detail about something that happened in the beginning. What happened to this person? What happened to Tom? Remy? He got stuck in slush. So does that seem like a good place where we could tell more sensory details? Yeah. Like what might it feel like or sound like what? or look like? So is there any words you think we could add Samaya? The slush is all wet and dirty. Ooh, so we could say, no, I got stuck in dirty, wet slush. Does that tell more about like why he would say no? Yes. yes. Yeah. What kind of, what, do you think we could have a sound word? What might it sound like? Like how could you describe that sound when he steps in it? Lush. That's something he might say. Eva D, do you have is a it, word? Yeah, the, it's a icky, icky. Sounds like, like how could we describe that with like a word that we could write? Remy? Splashy. Maybe splash. So we could say splash. 
So that, that gives a little bit more detail. Let's now let's reread that line and see if it sounds a little bit more interesting. No, no I got stuck in dirty wet slush. Slash. That sounds more interesting, right? Thumbs up if you agree. It sounds more interesting. Okay, so today we are going to check over our draft from yesterday of our poem about a character being late. So we're going to make sure that our poem has a few different things. I want you to put your eyes up on the board. So when you go back to your seat, you're going to need to check for these things, Bryson. You're going to need to check to make sure that it is a poem. poem. That's number one. So you have to look at it and see if it is a poem. Check. You have to see if it has sensory, sensory details. details that describe how something feels, feels looks, sounds, sounds, smells, smells or and today we're going to have some time to add in pictures, so that includes in your pictures adding those sensory details. You also have to make sure that you have verbs that show action. And I want you to be checking for careful spelling. So, all right, so first you're going to go to your seat, and I'm going to give you about one minute to reread just your front side, okay? We're just going to work on that front side first. You're going to reread over your front side and then put your two thumbs up when you reread over your work. That's your first step looking for these. Because we're going to work with, Marilise, we're going to work with a neighbor to practice giving a glow and a grow. We've done that before. So when we give a glow, we tell somebody a compliment, something that they did good, well, right, or correctly. Can I just say, that sounded nice. No. Yeah, because I didn't give something that was specific, right? I could say like, ooh, I liked your action words. Is that specific? That would be a specific thing. Or, ooh, that poem was had a good idea about somebody being late. That was specific. So that's the glow. And then when you give your grow, you give them something that they can improve, something they can do better or something they can add. Like maybe I might say, Oh, you know what? I, I saw that you forgot your magic ease. Why don't you add those in on those words? That would be something they could fix. Or your picture didn't tell me a lot of detail. Do you think you could add more to it? Okay. So your first step, you're going to reread and put two thumbs up before we get with our um, neighbors. And now that you've read it through, you are going to have about five minutes to add a drawing that includes those sensory details to tell about that poem. All right. So now we're going to spend that time with our chat partner. So remember, we have two goals with our chat partner. You are going to give them, do you remember something that you need to give them? A glow. A glow, right? Something that they did correct or something they did well like something you want to give them a compliment on and their glow has to be specific Miss partner guess favorite word it has to be specific what else do you need to give them well Casey a grow a something that they can do add or do better right something that they could fix so you need to be looking and listening to their work. All right? And then, then it will be your turn and they'll listen respectfully. And then, like, if they give you a grow and a glow that you need to, like, fix something, then you can do it after they say that. And you can listen respectfully to them. I'm going to set a timer for about four minutes so each friend gets about two minutes to share and hear their grow and glow. One speaker at a time. Oh, what should I A rope? Okay. I enjoy it. I'm ready to pick a team. Um, before you step away from your partner, could you thank your partner for their feedback? And we should be back at our seat in seven, five. Park your pencil, using your head matching me. 
raising a tall hand if you would like to share um, something that your partner told you, like their grow or glow, if you could share some feedback they gave you. Adelise? your picture had good detail and he reminded you about some of your spelling. Now that our friend gave us some feedback, we'll have a little bit more time to finalize it and take in that feedback that our friend gave us, fixing any of those things. Sometimes you might say, I don't think I want to do that, but sometimes you might say like, oh, that's a really good idea. I think I will do that. seconds if you were finishing up changing or adding anything that your partner told us like maybe your partner said to add a detail in your picture add a stop sign or fix some spelling so just do that quick and then put your pencil in your toolkit when you're done with that we are going to come back to that tomorrow and then have some time to present our poems tomorrow Verbs and good. Tell me what, like, what is their job? What kind of words are they? What do verbs do? They are what? Action, Action, words. Action, words. Action words. They tell what you do. do. Um, well, Casey, could you come try for mountains under jumps? Any other action words in that sentence? Sweet. Next? Fetches. 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 Um, how did you know that those words were verbs? Raising a tall hand, how did you know? They're like a thing like you do, like you can fetch with your dog and jump. They're things that you do. So we heard they're action words and they're things that you do. So I want you to put your eyes up on my sentences. And let's see if we can read them with beeps for blanks right now. Eyes up. We beep at school. I don't beep at school. We're going to see if we can fill in these sentences with what kinds of words? Action, Action words or verbs. verbs. So you're going to, your hands down right now. We're going to see if we can do that with your partner. So you're going to get a chance to fill in all four of these sentences with your partner. Who could give an example of the first one? I want to hear an example. Serenity Strong Voice. We play at school. Legend. I can write very well. Okay. Adjust our body to our shoulder buddy, please. If you are in blue or green, you are going to fill in these sentences first while your partner shows that they are listening. So I want your partner showing their listening look with eyes, ears, body, and brain. Okay, green and blue are starting with filling in each four of these sentences. Then you're switching. Okay, that was some good practice with verbs. I heard lots of different kinds of verbs. Um, so we're going to come back to our poem today and come back to yesterday we heard from a neighbor and they gave us some feedback. They said like if some things that we needed to do better or things we could improve and they told us some things that we were doing well. So we're going to spend some time today making sure that we're completing our drawing of our first poem and if you finish that you can go on to continue your second poem your one that has like more that you're using your imagination a little bit more and we're going to spend some time presenting today okay so red row could you please transition quickly quietly to your seat we're going to have about seven minutes to work on that right now
square gets parked when you come to your squares. Why don't we want to make sounds when we're presenting? Because then the people can't hear you or people can't hear the person who's sharing. Right. I'm going to have friends practice their audience behavior. So I'm looking for someone to be demonstrating that beautiful audience behavior right now that might be able to share what audience behavior looks like. Raising a tall hand. Remy, you look like you know what our audience behavior looks like. Audience behavior is when you're sitting down looking at the speaker. So you're looking at the speaker. How do we know you're, um, what, what else you're doing besides looking at them? You're listening to what they have to say. Listening to what they have to say, absolutely. And what do we do when they're finished? Give a silent cheer. Give a silent cheer because we appreciate their work. Um, what about when you are presenting? What are what are your expectations when you're presenting? Raising a tall hand, Camilla. Um, you, you're using a loud voice so they can hear you. Mm, using a loud voice so everyone can hear. That's important, Ethan. You 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 shouldn't like put like the paper like in front of like your face. Absolutely. But, and, we want to be able to see your face, and we want to be able to hear you loud and proud. And if your paper is in front of your face that kind of mumbles up your voice, right? Very important. So those are two very important parts of speaking. Um, Bryson, could you stand up, turn right around. Remembering those two parts of presenting and everyone else is demonstrating their audience behavior. When I am late, I run, jump and dash. I speed to my class, class and and take a break as as my friends. What do you have to do afterwards? Show your work. When I am late, I run and, and walk. I run and jump as fast as a kid. Can you show this picture? I included that I log in her picture. When I am late, I run, dash, and hurry. I get dressed and get in my car as fast as a super girl. Super girl.